Thank you for joining me in the present moment. Today, I am going to be sharing a conversation that I had with my mom. Uh, hopefully, it helps some people with their lives. She's a very spiritual type of person, and uh, it certainly helped me with a lot of with a lot of things in my life. Of course, I'm completely biased because <laughs> she's my mom, but um, I feel incredibly blessed to have her in my life. And so, hopefully, some of her wisdom and knowledge over over the years can be transmuted and, and passed on to other people. So <clears throat> that's one of the main reasons I'm sharing this. And uh, and also because it was kind of a request from some virtual friends online and you know who you are. So uh, without further ado, cue the intro. <laughs> well, hopefully you remember that. <laughs> well, we'll definitely yeah. it's be good to document it then. <laughs> we can refer to it later on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was born in Bend, Oregon. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, like around, you want to give a time period? Or you, is that sensitive? Do I have to? You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> I, it might no, be relevant. I was born in 1942 during the World War. Okay. Okay, and like, what was your childhood like? What kind of character were you? What, what did you like to do? Oh, everything. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was very, very busy as a child. And being an army brat, Yeah. Uh, my father was in the service in the army. We traveled all over. Yeah. So the longest we were in one place was three years. So it was quite easy for me to just, okay, we're going to pick up and... Right. Start a new life. Where was that at? What was the three-year period? Uh, well, let's see. It started, gosh, when I was in about five or six, okay. I think. And then, uh, you know, we were in California. We, we were all over the place. Yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. You know, then we went to Germany. Yeah. Which was an experience. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's about, uh -huh. yeah. It was. We traveled all over Europe. So, and that was part of the rebuilding process after World War II? Yeah, they still were in the middle of that, and all the bombed out houses and things right. were all just partly all bombed. Right. You know? Grandpa was part of the Army Corps of Engineers, right? He was. And um, in the forest that we lived next to when we were in Germany, uh, we weren't allowed to go in there because mm -hmm. they still had bombed out mm -hmm. uh, places and sometimes those are live mines and stuff like that right mm -hmm. or shells that got Sh that landed Shrap but then blow up yeah, yeah 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 so we weren't allowed to to play in the in the woods but um we had a lot of fun yeah because we didn't have tv yeah, yeah. we didn't have any, any of that, that. Yeah. so i was always outdoors um, you know, playing games and just things. radio, right? I mean, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you have any favorite radio shows or anything like that back in the day? Or you listen to much? Well, radio? in Germany, <laughs> not too <laughs> much. No, we had um, a lot of music. Yeah. My mother loved music, and so we had a record player, <laughs> and so we would put on music. Oh, and then my parents, when I was in fifth grade, bought me a accordion. <laughs> how, how does that go? Just, well, uh, let's say I tried to be impressed, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it seems like a hard instrument to pick up. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I tried my best, and she got me a teacher, and I learned to play Christmas songs, and and that was nice and stuff, but. I told my mom because I was starting to develop, you know, mm -hmm. that I couldn't continue the accordion because it would prevent me from developing. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't yeah, have to. You play. thought it was kind of a geeky, huh? Is well, that the real reason? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You thought it was a little nerdy, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, the boys may not like the accordion. But girl. when I told her that, she was sensitive and said, "Oh, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> that's good." <laughs> Did uh, what was some of because. We have some ties to there, 
Mm-hmm. Um, what was some of like the, like what is some of our, our ancestry on, on your side? Well, there is German, yeah. you know, on my side and uh, Swedish. Yeah. And Dutch, and you know, I'm really a mongrel. Yeah, I'm, you're you're a mongrel, a Euro mutt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that, you know, uh, English too. Yeah, yeah. That's on my dad's Anglo- side. Anglo-Saxon and German and mm-hmm. French, Norman, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, from my dad's side. Yeah. Scottish. Okay. I believe. Anyway, so yeah, it was a wonderful experience, and I had German girlfriends and I learned so much. One of my girlfriend's father was a pilot. Mm-hmm. And so he, uh, he flew Luftwaffe oh. in the war. Okay. And I was so fascinated and I asked him, how was it for you with the war? Right. You know? Right. Well, and I said, did you know all the Jewish atrocities and things that were happening? He said, no. Yeah. I just, I did my job. Right. Right. And, so he was a flyer, and but he but he was open, mm-hmm. you know, and he really wanted to answer the question. So I have a sort of a a feeling about people that they're kind of the same all over the world. If you really take the get, time, take time, yeah. and, and get to know them, yeah, find I, things in common. I like that. I like to think that way myself. So yeah. maybe it's because. I was raised by you, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, think? <laughs> probably, probably has something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what were like some of your f- passions and interests as a kid? Like, really interest, uh, interested you? What interested me was people. Okay. And ever since I can remember, like I remember one little gal in our, I was in uh, seventh grade. There was a gal who was autistic. That mm-hmm. was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so nobody would sit with her at lunch mm-hmm. and it would take her forever to eat her lunch because she would eat really, really tiny pieces. Mm-hmm. And so I would go over and sit with her. You know, I felt bad yeah. for her. So I've always been kind of a people person and, and intuiting what was going on and how people were feeling. Mm-hmm. So... Um, kind of and like an empath, very empathetic towards. Yeah. 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 Very much so. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Now, now we'll move on to the older, the older years, I guess. Like okay. Teach. How old are we getting? <laughs> well, I mean, is there anything noteworthy, like in your teens, you want to talk about, or like any? Oh yes. Stories you have. I, I, even though I, I was very spiritual, right? Because of um, my body, you know, being kind of attractive and that sort of thing. So I was voted Miss Portland Bell. Okay. That was my, my first job was with the telephone company. Right. Yeah. Was it Bell Telephone Company? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think there was any other. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's Maybe in outlying areas. Yeah. 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 But, um, you know, and... Uh, Princess Court and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And then I modeled for a while. I yeah. did that. But that was a very rewarding, but that was all when I was early, late teens, early 20s. Okay. So I yeah. did that, um, which was fun. But um, and we had good times with the telephone company. I would, um, yeah, the first uh, satellite that was put up. Mm. Uh, was from the telephone company. Oh, okay. Yeah, Pacific, well, Pacific Northwest Bell was part of that. Right. And so um, we got to, a, c- a couple of other girls and I got to go around to the fair surface uh-huh. and talk about Telstar. Okay. What was it? What kind of satellite was that? For? It was a big one like this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you don't know, know the technical, like no. what, what it was doing? Well, it was up there and communicating. Okay, and so that some was type the of... first step. I okay. don't know exactly, and maybe it helped the telephone company. I would imagine yeah. that they put it up there. Yeah, yeah. You know. Interesting. Yeah, so that was the first um, satellite. Yeah. Tell well, commun- uh, communication. Public, public communication mm-hmm. satellite. I mean, right. who knows what the government had up there already? Right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, so, did you have any love interests or anything like that? You... Well, yes. I I was in love with uh, uh, my boyfriend who was uh, with me in, in high school for two years. And then we got out and uh, had a relationship, you know, for a year or so. And uh, I decided, you know, I thought we should get married. Plus, I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. The religion thing is a whole nother story. But so, um, his brother thought he was too young. So he said he should probably go in the service first, mm -hmm. in the reserves and mm -hmm. do something. I said, okay. So off he went for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he came back, then we got married. Okay. The only problem is, you know, um, because my parents were still all traveling all the time, they were clear down in Louisiana, I think, somewhere mm -hmm. at that time. No. Yeah, there. And then they went to France. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they weren't there mm -hmm. for my okay. wedding. Yeah. Okay. But all our friends were, and, and, uh, we were very excited and, and we bought a little house. You know, in those days, that was fairly easy mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little more affordable. You had a job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little money. One person had a job, too, not even two, right? Right. Yeah. All yeah. right. Then, you remember about how much the house was? Like, maybe like 15? Yeah, I, no, I, I sold it for $10,000. Oh, my and goodness. And I thought, wow. That was <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is crazy. <laughs> like a three-bedroom, one-bath type of thing? Or? Uh, it was two-bedroom. Okay. Uh, one bath. Okay. $10,000. And it had a floor furnace, you know. Yeah. It was, it was a starter home. Right, right. And it had a nice front room and a kitchen and a lawn out front and back. And, yeah. You Very know, cool. it was... In what? In Portland? Was it in Portland? Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. In North Portland. Okay. All right. North Portland. Well, because I went to Roosevelt High School. Okay. But, you know. You know, you know that. All my yeah. friends were there, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. so, yeah. So... We bought the house, and then he was, my husband was having trouble uh, finding jobs. Mm -hmm. He would find a job, mm -hmm. and then something would happen, and he'd get fired, or he'd mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out what was going on mm -hmm. with him, you know? And you think, you think it was a little, had to do with like some PTSD, and... Anything like that? Uh, did he go? Did and, he see any war, like like Korean War? Or did he see any action like that? No, no, no. Yeah. That was before all that. Okay, was, okay, yeah, in the sixties. Anyway, so so I couldn't figure out what was happening, and what happened was um, I didn't realize that he was paranoid schizophrenic, mm -hmm. because that particular. Uh, thing usually comes on a little bit later. Mm -hmm. in yeah, your life. Tw twenty-one it's, to twenty-five, I think is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was right in that area, so I couldn't figure out what was going on with him. Mm -hmm. But all I knew is that he was doing strange things, like he bought a gun, mm -hmm. which I don't like guns, especially since my father had to carry one for right. <laughs> my whole life. And uh, anyway. And um, some other strange things. And when I asked him, he really didn't have a good reason mm -hmm. for it. He was exceptionally quiet. Yeah. And um, reserved, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, when I tried to get into a deep conversation with him, he just wouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. So um, he ended up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And so that was... A horrible trauma yeah and by that time I had a baby yeah that was Steve, brother, brother Steve. my first child yeah. yes uh -huh. so um, I didn't really know what I was doing for quite some time right uh, or, how old were you like around how old like uh, 22 okay and um, his family blamed me 
because they didn't understand realize he was paranoid schizophrenic right. and uh, they blamed me yeah. but I was afraid of him toward the end it was just not yeah. it was scary mm. so I asked him to move back home mm. okay well we weren't doing so well yeah, okay. and I said I think you're scaring me yeah. so I said why don't you go back home uh -huh. You know, and then you can see Steve and come and see me. So right. It was weird. <laughs> and is that, so did he commit suicide at home, back home? Uh, no. He, he took a car down to a place um, by the University of Portland. Oh, okay. You know, there are like cliffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's a place the kids used to drive down, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And he went there and um, killed himself with exhaust. Like just and put a hose into the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for that. It's yeah, well, rough. then then I had one of his brothers um, doing all kinds of crazy things to me after that. Mm. Um, I didn't know that. I shot a gun out in front of my apartment. Mm. I sold the house and I moved because I thought, well, maybe that'll help. And notes on my car, mm. you know scary notes on my car. Mm -hmm. So I think his brother was probably paranoid schizophrenic too, but his family was not really on top of things. Yeah. So I don't know. Disat kind of uh, disattached and not, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see why that would be. So anyway, that's, that was, started my career, you know. In trauma, in trauma yes, therapy? in trauma counseling. Yeah. And uh, because I, and I'd always been very spiritual. This, that's the other thing. And before we got married, the priest told us he didn't think that would be a good idea. To get married? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Usually if you don't get the priest's blessing, that's a, a big sign. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I talked him into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, you don't hear that too often. You don't hear the priest saying it's not a good idea. Not a good but, idea. Huh, mm -hmm. Interesting. He had a feeling. That's, that's fascinating. Father Schwab. I'll never forget him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I was blamed. It was a horrible thing. Um, you know, yeah, I, I had to move that. again, clear across town where nobody... Somebody was shooting at the front of my apartment mm -hmm. and leaving me notes on the car and stuff. And I'm pretty sure it was his, his brother. brother was yeah. bullet holes like in your... Yes, oh my against the building. Wow. That's crazy. So you could, someone could actually really get hurt if it was. Yeah. yeah. The, the detective came. Oh. Wow. And with, you know, the police and right. stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, they found bullets mm -hmm. in the side of the building. And um, Was it a brick building? Yeah. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I always have been protected. Yeah. Always Spiritually. Protected. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. But, um, no. The, he told me, um, the detective, he said, I want you to move way across town, and I don't want you to tell anyone mm -hmm. where you're at. No one. Mm -hmm. And if your mom wants to come and visit you, you tell her that. Mm -hmm. Okay? And and um, it's okay if they come, but not to tell anyone yeah. where you're at. Yeah, I remember you mentioning like a stalker once, but I didn't realize it was this, the same the person. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was, it was his brother. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Well. Jerry, right? Wasn't No, Jerry was my husband's name. Yeah, Jerry, his brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And his brother's name was Steve. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. Um, and my brother's name was Steve, so he's yeah. named after his brother? Is he, and no, your brother? No, he was named after my brother. Your brother, also Steve. Not him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So anyway, so took little Stevie, and, and then it was time when Jakey had come back from, they all had to come back from France. Oh, okay. They left all their belongings and just flew home to be with me. Yeah, because of that, because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, Jakey decided to move in with me. Okay. She got a job at the telephone company, too. Okay. And uh, that was helpful yeah. to have her there. So we did that. 
Uh, but... So you have a, a brother, Steve, and a sister, Jakey, just for context. For oh, for reference. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Her name is Jerry. Yeah. Really. <laughs> right. Which is funny because that was my husband. Right. I know, it gets really confusing. <laughs> yeah. I never said Kenny or Jerry or whatever. Right. Oh, that's the other thing. My name wasn't always Ariel. Yeah. Used to be Kenny, right? Yes, I was yeah. named after my father because I was born in 1942 during the war, and my mother didn't think he might come back, so she oh, wanted a namesake. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. He came back when I was two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so anyway, um, yeah. So I I had the name Kenny. Yeah, we'll probably get into what. When you changed it and why you changed it later on, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So after after that happened, that kind of probably changed your life and perspective on things a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like how long, how long do you think it took for you to like kind of like recover from that or, or be at peace with that? Well. Or do, have you, are you at peace with it? <laughs> I'm at peace with it yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we don't know why things happen the way they do. But um, being the kind of person I am, I had a tendency to want to help people. Mm -hmm. So um, that's probably why I married my first husband. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But we never know what God has in store for us. So then that's when I started my career uh, looking for ways to help people with trauma. Mm. Um, what was the, the, what was the... Do you want to go through all my husbands? Or are sure. Just, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can crack you that first if you want. <laughs> I guess I'm either not a very good judge of character when I was or young. I just want to help everybody. Or I just yeah, want... right. I don't know. So... Uh, Yes, yeah, so then I, I married uh, Haig okay. Kartosian, who's Armenian. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's completely the, different than your first husband. Oh. As far as looks Yeah, he was a public especially. relations. Okay. That was his career. Yeah, in the Navy? Well, no, he had his own company. Oh, okay. okay. And then when that war broke out, Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. Yeah, he went there and he briefed the Follies. Mm, right? Okay. That's what they called it. Yeah. When all the news got news guys and stuff. Right. But, and so then when he came back, he went into marketing with the Black Angus a restaurant. Oh, okay. Chain. I didn't. No wonder why that was so popular when I was young. You guys would yeah. always go there and stuff. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. So we spent time. Uh, a year. My aunt came and lived with me, and he went overseas, and then he came back and. And he was in the reserves for a while. We went to Hawaii. Uh, Aunt, Aunt Mamie, Flo? Uh, no, this was... A man I never met? Right. Okay. Oh, no. And Evelyn. Yeah. Up in Seattle. She was Bian and Bobby's mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I ever met her. No, I yeah. don't think so. Yeah. I mean, that was much later. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, she came... And lived with me, and it was helpful for her because she was saving to go to Japan. She always wanted to go to Japan, so <laughs> she didn't have rent, and it, so it was a good win-win. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, so then, yeah, and then we went to Hawaii, and we spent uh, a couple, of, almost two years there, and um, that's where uh, Aaron was born. Right. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. yeah. Pearl Harbor, and uh, so in a military hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which was a trip. <laughs> yeah, well, why? What, what's different about a military hospital than like a standard one? Well, a standard one, they have nurses, you know, especially when you're about ready to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nobody there. In the military hospital? Uh, well, they put me in a room. Right. But, but there's no nurses or like a doula or someone to help you at all? Well, I don't know. But there, yeah, and when I finally got to the delivery room, mm -hmm. but they, but nobody, I couldn't find anybody in the halls in that place. They're just so long. <laughs> I couldn't find anybody. Okay. And he was coming. 
Uh, I yeah. couldn't even walk, right? Oh, you're walking so, in? Yeah, I'm walking and out of the bed. And, was right. Hag gone? Was he on? Yeah, he went down to have coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't All right. expect it to come that fast, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So that's when you're... What were you doing before the... before you went to the hospital? Like, like did you have to take a car, rush there? You... Oh, yeah. He put me in the car and took yeah. me. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, they just put me in this room. Nobody checked me. <laughs> Nothing. All there were, there was an orderly that was walking up and down the halls. You know? Yeah. So finally I got up and I waddled <laughs> down the hall and I yelled, somebody better come and help me have this baby or I'm yeah. going to have it in the hall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So then someone came. Oh, they yeah, ran. Yeah. <laughs> he put me on a gurney, you know. But he was almost born before yeah. I even got there. But anyway. You had to advocate for yourself a little bit. Oh, <laughs> yes. Army hospitals, that wasn't, uh, well, anyway. They have a different viewpoint. <laughs> so, but it was fine, you know. I mean, it was an easy delivery and it was all, and he was fine. And then, um, so then you and Hag had some issues and problems and stuff. And yes. Had a falling out, all the, all the fun relationship stuff. Yeah. I, he, he was working for, um, Stuart Anderson at that time, Black Angus. Oh, okay. He was out of the army. Okay. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe right maybe, now. Yeah. Right. And so, um, there was a lot of infidelity. Mm. Yeah. You travel around a lot. Yeah, yeah. He had to go to city to city and set up Black Angus's and market them and right. stuff. So, there was infidelity and stuff. And I, I just was hurt Yeah. by that. Makes sense. And I thought, don't. He said, well, there were other things, too. Yeah. Because he was Armenian and he was raised his first generation, right. the culture was yeah. so different. And what was expected from me was so different. Right. I mean, I had to learn how to cook all kinds of Armenian food. And mm -hmm. sisters would come and teach me all this stuff. And right. I had to had to do this and I had to do that. And I had to act this way. And, right. You know, and uh, I felt smothered. And, and not yourself, kind of. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. So, but that worked out. It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> you learned a lot from it, right? I learned a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's funny because in my uh, numerology chart, I have, I have so many twos. Oh, yeah. And that's relationships. Like, relationships. Yeah. And not in a good place. <laughs> I didn't have oh, okay. <laughs> No. In other words, I came here to learn about people right. and things, different cultures, and all. just to learn about what this earth was all about. Right. And so I think sometimes the more hardship we have, the higher we rise right. to, to understand and to have compassion, not only for ourselves, but for others. So I don't hold any ill will to Hague or Jerry, my first husband, or, you know. So, anyway. Yeah. Just you know, and so, then and, and then your father. Yeah. Yeah. My father is actually because you kind of met them at the same time, didn't you? I mean. Yeah. Uh, both both my dads, basically like. Oh, well, no, I. Yeah, kind of, around the same time. You met my dad of, first, yeah, right? Yeah, but he was married, and I was married to your dad. And, right, but yeah. I mean, you met right around that same time, right? In the 70s. Scientology. Right, <laughs> in the 70s. Yeah, in the 70s. 77? Uh, 76, 77? Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, so, how, <laughs> how did you get into Scientology? Maybe we should start there. How did you, you meet my dad? Did you meet him in Scientology? Yes. Yeah. I met them at I met him at the uh, organization in Portland here. Okay. Scientology. Okay. 
And um, anyway, th so that's that was my Scientology journey. Yeah. 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 My Catholic journey was when I was young. And, and this was just you trying to explore spirituality and different mm -hmm. religious. How far did you go with that? Like um, All the way to the highest place you can go. <laughs> well, I mean, like, what uh, religious organizations did you study and stuff like that? Did you, like, look into Buddhism and Eastern? Uh-huh. Yeah, so, so just all over the place, anywhere you could? You uh -huh. just delved deep? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Gurus. Yeah. Went through a lot of gurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my that's a whole nother the religious part or the spiritual part is a whole nother place that's hold that has held me in good stead. Right, because it's know? not really separate from it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of part of it. Yeah. yeah. So that's when I met your your dad. And my, my dad's really, I mean, right? And no, you, he was. Michael wasn't there. Oh, okay. okay. No. Oh, not in Portland. Yeah, yeah. I met your dad's good friend. Yeah, okay. In Portland, yeah. And then so... In Portland. And then so he... So... We decided to get married. and okay. Because when... In the, in Scientology, they have strict rules, right? About relationships and things. So you can't really be together mm -hmm. unless you're uh, married. married. Okay. 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 And besides, if we weren't married, then we would have had to live in, in birthing, which is like the army. Mm. There's three tier uh, beds mm, wow. and a small little Pots. room. And yeah, yeah so that's crazy. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. It's, it is very militant. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, we'll get into, we can get into that first before we move on, if you want, since we're already in that time period. Okay. Yeah. So... Well, what, that's actually one of the questions I have is like, what is the, what were some of the positive things about Scientology? What were some of the bad, negative things about Scientology? Because I'm sure it wasn't just all bad, right? It's, oh no. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. It uh, allowed me to understand uh, how powerful we are. And um, I went there actually to, to help the staff because mm. I was highly trained in Scientology already as far as I could go in the Portland organization. Okay. And then so you went down to I California went, mm -hmm. to the Sea Organization, right? The Sea Org? Uh, yeah. Okay. Which is in LA? Yes. Okay. All right. But I also uh, went to Florida. Oh, okay. Because they have a base there and those are the upper levels. So I did all the upper levels there. Mm. But that was uh, when I was still with... Um, Cartosian. Oh, okay. So you're still with Peg when you went yeah. down to... Oh, okay. So you were probably... You were in Scientology for a while. And then my yeah. dad came in and that's when you met him, that type of thing? No. I I, I was with... Uh, like, how when did I you went to the get into it? You're just exploring New, different was, spiritual yeah. things? Okay. Well, Scientology. I'm going to find out about this. Okay. I'm going to go see what that is, you know? Okay. And okay. so, I, I mean, I've done... So many different things. Right, right. Hard to remember them all. Right. But but yeah, no, I I uh, started with the Portland organization. Okay. okay? And because um, they helped train me with the basic, te you know, to become an auditor, mm -hmm. which is a counselor, mm -hmm. right, basically. Right. Um, I had to jump through all kinds of hoops, do some studies. I had to take stuff myself there, be a class four, that's what they call it, what? It's as high as you can go in, a, in an external Auditor. org. Okay. Right. Okay. And um, so uh, Haig kept sending me to Florida, you know, because he thought there was something wrong with me. He always thought there was something wrong. Well, oh. he may have been right. <laughs> But, <laughs> but, um, because of just your spiritual kind because of, because of my spiritual like, bent and okay. because of my eagerness to learn, you know, he wouldn't let me go back to school. I wanted to go back to college. Mm. He wouldn't let me. Hmm. Yeah. Because of his kind of his cultural. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. 
why don't you stay home and right. keep the keep so the house? I couldn't do much, you know, with him. It was very limiting. So, so um, <clears throat> he kept sending me to Florida, thinking they'd fix me up, and then I <laughs> <laughs> only made it worse. What in, <laughs> what in Florida though? With with well, Scientology? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Florida. Florida, those are all the up, upper levels, is what okay. they call them. And they're very spiritual levels. Okay. The, the lower levels are, are about handling life, mm -hmm. right? And then the upper levels are about who we really are as spiritual beings. And, uh, you know, the mind mm -hmm. and how it works. The difference between the ego and the spirit. Mm -hmm which is totally different than Catholicism and religions. It's very different. Yeah. It's so, a little more Eastern almost, I would think. Like, uh, yes, yeah. in some respects. Right. Uh -huh, it is. And so it was But like, it's very militant. Okay. But there again, here I am in an organization. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. following the military. <laughs> right. Um, way so that being. obviously was one of the cons, is that it's a little... Um, like rigid in its yes, very much so. Yeah, okay, very much so. So uh, and it was very judgmental. I mean, mm. you know, that part I didn't like at all. Mm. And like, if you make a mistake or something like that, then you're like chastised for it. And oh yeah, you have treated. to make amends and you just do all like okay. you know, like you're a bad person. Yeah. Anyway, I don't believe that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had I went there to help the staff. Mm -hmm. Because the staff was what I noticed. Nobody, they don't get trained. Mm. They didn't get any auditing. Mm, okay. They got, you know, some pittance of $10 a week or something. They, they had food unless they didn't have their stats up. And then we were deprived of that. We oh. had to eat beans and rice. Oh, so um, uh, like a cor not corporal punishment or like a capital? Yeah. Or yeah, like, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's not very well, uh, nice of <laughs> Of an organization to do. Well, for sure. <laughs> of, co of course not. <laughs> I mean, That's you know, wild. you 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 reward people that work well. You don't punish everybody when you you aren't getting your quota right. of what you're supposed to do. It's kind of ruling my fear. It is. Yeah. And so I realized that when I was down there. So I went to help the staff, and so. I did because I was what they call the qualification secretary, which you're over uh, the staff's personal problems, and that's what, exactly where I wanted to go because I wanted to help them. Yeah. Right? right. And I did. But it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what was one of the wildest things that happened that you witnessed in Scientology that was kind of like really made you realize, like, oh my God. This, I'm this out of here. Bat, yeah, this, these people <laughs> yeah. are batshit crazy or whatever. Well, the husband of the um, CEO, commanding officer, right? Her husband um, had a serious mental problem, mm. and no, you know, nobody could fix it. And she kept sending him to me. I couldn't fix it. It was a, it was a chemical thing. It was a chemical imbalance. Yeah, uh, like just, deep um, mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I mean, he came to me and I I would quiet him down. I would help him. He'd come back in again, yeah. but it didn't, it wouldn't last. Right. And finally he decided he was going to go to the president of the United States or something and um, tell him that he should be in Scientology. And it was, <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. it was very crazy. Yeah. And uh, he took, he, he. Got a plane, got on a plane, and we had to send the ethics officer, put him on a plane to go after him. Mm. I mean, it was just wow. totally nuts. Yeah. Yeah, totally nuts. Mm. So that, and then it was, it's worse than the military. Even in the military, they support each other. Right. Do you know? That's, a, that's the whole but premise. in Scientology, they kind of pit you against mm. other fractions of oh, wow. the organization. Like if if our marketing department, which was books, publications, mm. is what it was, uh, if they didn't do well, then nobody ate. Everyone suffered. 
everybody so suffered. So if, if the money wasn't coming in, everyone suffered. Everybody suffered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Doesn't that kind of it get down to the money. root? Yeah, <laughs> that kind of does get down to the root of a lot yeah. of it. But the only reason that I went there and the only reason that I left is because I went there to help the staff. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. But it got so crazy. I, I just, I said, I can't handle this anymore. Besides, I was married to your dad then. And, you know, he, he wasn't um, run of the mill. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he, it was a genius. Your father was a genius. So was his brother. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. And so he would get bored very easily, and and he didn't mind breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. And so he was always in trouble. Yeah. Always in trouble. With the, with the ethics. <laughs> ethics. Ethics all the time. Yeah. And then he was put in the, it's like the brig. Mm. It's, yeah, he was, yeah. Mm. All that kind of stuff. And, it was it was just getting and with everything else that was having happening in the organization, <clears throat> I just decided to leave. Hmm. So and he wasn't allowed in the org. He got kicked out. Yeah. 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 So you so he got kicked out, but you had did you excommunicate? Like you have to like you... I didn't no, you don't tell anybody. You I just, don't I don't want to get put in isolation. Okay. Either. So you just left and then yeah. just yeah. <laughs> you just disappeared. That's the way you do it. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, so, so my, my dad uh, yeah. was so a Hungarian immigrant, right? And he went through some stuff. He really did. And his childhood was not good. Yeah. And you already know that. Yeah. Um, you know, and we didn't know each other that well, mm -hmm. you know? And then how about, like, how are the kids in, in the CR treated and stuff like uh, Steve, and Aaron, Steve and Aaron? Terrible. Yeah. I kept, uh, Steve qualified for for the, the young people's group, mm -hmm. Commodore's Messengers. So he was okay. He, you know, was doing that. And his schizophrenia hadn't kicked in quite yet. Because mm -hmm. he's still too young. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And then but I was kept... he still quiet and like very reserved like his father? Like has he always been kind of like that? Pretty quiet or is he pretty well, normal? He, well, then he was pretty, pretty normal. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't notice, notice anything. that there was something wrong because he was still early. I don't know how old was he? Just in it, starting in his teens. teens. Okay. Yeah. Had, so Aaron was just still just a young. Yeah. He. Yeah. yeah. He. He was so cute. He was, <laughs> anyway, so I brought him with with me where mm -hmm. my birthing was, mm -hmm. where your dad and I were. I I brought him to that building and then um they had all of the celebrity center kids mm. there okay because i didn't want him in another building away from me oh so, okay okay yeah I was... so the celebrity center that's like where all the like how is what's the difference between like celebrities and how they treat the celebrities compared to just normal well, grunts yeah the actually the ceo the planning officer of the celebrity center uh, was so disappointed when I came to Publications Org. Because she had talked to me. She'd been in uh, Seattle, where we were. Right. Uh, and she asked me to um, come down to Celebrity Center and work there. And uh, I should have done it. <laughs> I should have done it. <laughs> but what happened was... Um, well, we don't need to go backward. So, um, so Celebrity Center is where, you know, notoriety. You right. Know, Tom Cruise right. and all of those people, um, any actors and actresses or prominent people would go. Because, so you had to have someone that was a little more polished, somebody that could, knew how to talk. Yeah, talk and, and interact. Yeah, interact. Did you ever meet any, any of the actors? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Like John Travolta or anyone like that? Uh, they weren't I quite didn't in it meet yet. him, no. no. They weren't quite in it yet? Some of them? Some of them, yeah, they weren't. Did you ever meet uh, Hal Putoff? <laughs> Do you really know that name? Uh-huh. Do you really? 
Yeah. That's incredible. Why? Really, you know who Hal Putoff is, huh? Mm -hmm. Because he's a very big, prominent figure in a lot of the science spaces. Oh. Uh, Maybe for... I just heard his name. I mean, okay. I don't know him personally. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I know he was in Scientology for a while, too, so that's why I asked. Yeah. So no, I can, yeah, he was. Nice. That's probably how I remember. Remember his name? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I always wanted to ask you. I never, huh. never asked you. But yeah, that, well, that's interesting. I'll have to look deeper into that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. So okay. So so anyway. So and I was there for three years. Okay. You know, with the kids. Okay. And uh, when I left, uh, Aaron was already at his dad's for the summer mm -hmm. vacation thing, and uh, we couldn't find Steve. He was with the Commodore's Messenger. So mm -hmm. we, I left. Yeah, this is really weird. Um, your dad wasn't allowed on campus. He wasn't mm. allowed anywhere. What did he do that was so bad? Or is this accumulation of things kind of did a bunch of different things? Yeah. Better not, better not talk about it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, Just, they have all kinds of rules. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But he was such a rule breaker yeah. and did his own thing no matter what right. that... Um, he was dismissed from right. every place, so yeah. he was declared suppressive. Mm. Okay. Okay. So what does suppressive mean? Means that... that means when somebody is um, being evil. Mm. In, <laughs> I don't in, know what in, different word. Yeah, yeah, in a darker place. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, they're not, they don't cooperate, they're not trying to enhance. Mm. Uh, egoic wow. rather than... A yes. spiritually giving type of person. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But, you know, to in his defense, uh, he had a terrible childhood. Yeah. They used to lock him in the shed. He'd get, he'd get whipped with a right. trap. Yeah. All kinds of things. Right. You and I can talk about that sometimes if you're interested. Oh, you told me some of it. He, yeah. Yeah. He never really talked about it before, though. I never, I never really asked him. I don't think, but yeah, I don't no. remember him talking about it too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do know um, he moved to Toronto when he was one because of the Hungarian Civil War, mm -hmm. um, trying to, you know, a coup basically try to get up to to get rid of the Russian influence in Hungary. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's got to be a little rough <laughs> just as a start. So. And also, I know that he, the, his, my grandpa, his dad was a tool and die maker and for GM, I believe. Mm -hmm. They moved out to Detroit and like all that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But never really talked about the, that type the of the beatings. Yeah. And, uh, never really talked about that. And his mother. He, he, yeah. Yeah. Never really talked about that stuff too much. When his but. mother died, you know, he went back. Mm -hmm. I went back. To Hungary. No, no. To Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. And because his mother was in the hospital and mm -hmm. she was dying. And um, that's when I first met her. Mm. You never met her before that? Uh -uh. Okay. No. But um, not good. Yeah. She called him names. Mm. It was just. Yeah. Unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. But mm. anyway. Yeah. So, so after, I, after I, I have compassion for him. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And you say he was really genius, but like because of mathematic abilities and stuff like that. He or? just had ingenuity. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, but mm. his mind was uh, amazing. Just amazing. Mm. And um, he got involved with the Canadian Mafia. I remember that. I, was, I can say that now. Yeah. I, everything's okay. I remember that, actually. I remember going out on a boating trip with oh. two of those gentlemen. When we caught the stingray? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> beat, it, beat it over the head. That was, I know. <laughs> that was a... Whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. That was an interesting experience. But, uh, yeah, I do remember that later on. So, so after that, you moved back up to the, North, the Pacific Northwest. You moved what, up to the Seattle mm -hmm. area? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where you started your little nursery school. Yeah. So uh, I was born, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, yes, <laughs> they went there. Course. Yeah. <laughs> went up. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then, um, like, what were some of the what? Where did you start working then, or did you start? Did you start doing your private uh, practice well, stuff? Or? I did, but um, you know, I had. I had been taking astrology classes. I'd been taking all kinds of uh, things, you know, right. out of the box things. Right. Yeah, that's a that's another question. Actually, is like, um, well, how useful do you think things like astrology, numerology, um, tarot cards, angel cards? How useful do you, is that? Do you think like in how? How strong is your faith in that? I mean, it's kind of a loaded question. I already know the answer. But, but. Well, I think we all come out of, come here with a design in us mm -hmm. to to learn whatever it is we need to learn for our spiritual growth. Okay. That's what I really feel. So, and uh, to have this experience with the body and this dimension, okay, we're getting into spiritual stuff. So, um, we're all here to learn, and some people learn one way, some people learn another. Right. You know, it's, there's nothing right or wrong about any of it. Um, it all it has validity. And besides, whatever we believe, we see. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was a progression of knowing this and seeing um, that everything in my life I've created. You know, people are busy blaming each other for everything. Yeah, especially right now. And yeah. it's really stupid because we're creating our own realities. Right. So I created all that so that I could be all I could be here and learn. Right. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade any of it because... All the it, lessons of the past, you mean? Yeah. 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 No, I would Because, uh, I mean, I don't dwell on the past, but <laughs> it was, it's helped me in my journey to back to God. And so for the, for the tarot cards and mm -hmm. astrology, mm -hmm. you use those as just kind of like a, a tool, like a got for... From like the interaction of of us with nature, or like to to recognize um, a person's patterns. Like, is that what, what it is for you, or what's the what's the value for you, or what's the um, why are you so? Do you know why you're so drawn to those things? Is there esoteric? Mm -hmm, the very esoteric yeah. stuff. Yeah, metaphysics. You know, the things that mm -hmm. can't quite be proven. Empirically, but are you know, you know, doesn't mean they're wrong, or mm -hmm. it's just almost like a, each individual person has to explore it for themselves. I think, but well, because I think we're more than a body, okay. I think a body's like you know, your car, you know, you have to get around right mm -hmm. here. <laughs> you know, I'm not being callous, I'm just saying, um, it's a vehicle, right? right? And so we all choose a different car, you know, to experience it. And so that's kind of simplistic, but yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, what do you think the fuel is for the car? Where do you get the fuel? Yeah. What do you think the fuel is for the car? Like, God. Yeah. That's like the source. Spirit, yeah. That's the source. Yeah. Um, and so we inhabit a body, and think about it. I, I decided to come in during a world war. Why did I do that? Mm -hmm. I volunteered. Seriously. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. <laughs> I was in a different dimension. There were figures that are quite transparent in a certain dimension. And I was standing there. And, and another world war is coming. You know, there's, you know, what to do. And so I said, I'll go. And they all went, oh no, she wants to go now. <laughs> you know, this is really esoteric what I'm talking to right, you about, right. but 
Trust that's me. how you feel, and that's that's, a, that's your faith, that, and that's your faith. That's, that's what I'm projecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I came during World War because I wanted to help, and I think I have. Yeah. Well, you certainly helped me. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I'm I'm a little biased. I think you know maybe a little bit. But. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> you were so cute. Oh my gosh. Even when you were tiny. Oh, I want. I'm not talking. Should I, is it okay if I talk about you? Sure. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> when, when you were, you were in um, in nursery school, right? Where you know you'd have to get around in groups, and then they'd read books mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so you were always asking questions yeah. and, and interrupting. You wanted to find out, what, you know, yeah. what they were meant by this. And the, yeah. That hasn't changed too much in the way. So. <laughs> That's right. And I'm so glad I passed it up. <laughs> You know, so, but the teacher didn't know what to do because she knew it wasn't purposeful, you know, because of a group. And, and. It's disruptive. In the well, group. you just, yeah, you yeah. would talk. You right. would give your opinion and you. Want to talk about Want to talk about Ask it. questions, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're doing right now. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've kind of accepted that's just kind of who I am because I, like right. I like to <laughs> explore and get different perspectives to get a better understanding of myself and my interaction with the universe. That's how I look at it. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, it's part of your personality too. It, you know, yeah. we all come in with a personality. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. You're not that either. I'm not what? A personality. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're saying I'm like... You're using it here. Right. But it's not you. Yeah. I mean, that's who I identify with on the planet. But yeah, there I, you I go. know what you mean. I know exactly oh, yeah. what you're saying. Physically. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. That's kind of the ego thing, right? You got to kind of balance that. <laughs> Don't get too <laughs> hung up on it because it, uh, it, it'll uh, cause a lot of pain and misery if you get a little hung up on it, I think. I, yeah. From my experience, anyways. Well, yeah. Yeah. Narcissism is a classic case, case of... That. Yeah. Being yeah. an ego. Okay. Because it's all, all about protecting them. oneself. And, and, yeah. And me, them. Me. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I'll go there. So, so anyway, so in this little group that you were in, you were, she, she, the teacher didn't know what to do. And I said, well, let me talk to him. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and see what he says. Because I was always wanting your opinion mm -hmm. about. It's time to take a bath, you know. No, I want to play. Well, I know, but you know, you're gonna to have to go to bed, and so you want to take a quick bath, or do you want to play? You know, I'd have to right. talk to you like that so that you could make a decision. Yeah, about classic uh, parenting. Trying not to, to yeah. force you, right? Uh, and what you did, you know. But anyway, so um, I talked to you about it. You know, what can we do about this? I said, I just don't know what, what to do. Do you know what to do about that? You know, mm -hmm. well, you you understood that you were interrupting, but you kind of couldn't help yourself. That's what you told me. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, what, what, what can we do there? And you said, I know. I know. You said, Put this over my mouth, you know. Um, what did you say? A kerchief or put, put something over your mouth? Tape. I think tape. It was tape. Yeah, but tape. Oh, it was scotch mouth. tape. Yeah, scotch tape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and I, I thought, oh gosh, his teacher's gonna think I'm masochistic. Right. <laughs> right. But no, no, it was your idea. So yeah. I brought the scotch tape. We went to school, and and I said, this is what he wants to do. Because then he knows he won't be interrupting. And she could not believe it. <laughs> I said, I didn't do it. I didn't. Right. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things that you did when you were little, which were... Odd. Odd. Mm -hmm. It worked, though, right? I mean... Oh, it worked yeah. perfectly. <laughs> and we told you you could take it off any time that you felt now you had, we were in control of that. Mm -hmm. And when you took it off, you were. Yeah. It was like a key. Physical cue. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, anyway, that's beside the point, but it's a cute story about you. 
So yeah, um, thanks for embarrassing the hell out of me. <laughs> no, it's okay. I know that was tame. I know you have way worse oh, stories. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, if so, if someone wasn't raised with a, a religious background or a spiritual kind of like sway. Or they, um, or they were raised, but maybe in a very structured way, like kind of like you were, like Catholicism or some type, or, or um, some type of you know really rigid religious religious doc- indoctrination or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, how would they, How would you suggest someone like find like explore spirit- spirituality, their their own spirituality or their own paths? Well, all I know is I was always my own person when I came in. I mean, when I was two years old, I was riding my tricycle down to the orphanage. You know why? Why? Because they didn't have a mommy and daddy. Mm. And I felt bad. Mm. So I would go down and play with them and Mm. bring them things (laughs) at two. And so whenever I disappeared, they knew I took my tricycle down to the... And sometimes the janitor would bring me home. Mm. I don't know where my... I guess they were working. I don't know. Anyway, so so I've done some really, you know, interesting things in my life because I don't really track with the norm. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a normal person, but mm-hmm. I don't. Well, what do you think? Um, do you think that we're hardwired for, um, you know, like war and isolation from one another and like a dog eat dog type of situation or do you think that we're more hardwired for empathy and I mean and when you look and when I say we uh, you know maybe on the scale of humanity but also just in general life and and consciousness itself like what, what do you think what how do you think well none of us are hardwired because we always have choice we have, so you're a proponent we of, have free will you're a proponent of free will yes yeah we have free will even God can't interfere. Hmm. So, so we're here to learn lessons, and some of us take this the right road, and some of us take the left road, and we're all, you know, doing our thing. Um, to answer your question, though. Well, I mean, like, when I say hardwired, I mean, like, some people in the physical world, right, in our physical reality, some people um, think that we're, you know, it's a ruthless cold you know nature is is <laughs> nature is metal so I had some people say metal like the music you know very intense and mm-hmm. and um and cutthroat you know in the material world but that's kind of seems like that's what the material world is right but um i guess what i mean is like uh, my question is like do you think that we're we are truly hardwired in nature or do you think that we are we, we're hardwired for empathy to or maybe somewhere in the middle. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I'm not suggesting that it's an A or B because that's kind of a false dichotomy, I guess. But, you know. Well. What do you, what do you think? Well, that's a big question because the whole you're including the whole world here. Okay, well, we could just we go with the, humanity. Just, could we narrow it down how, far, how narrow do you want to go? Maybe just America? Well, not. Uh, generalities. Right. Are also, never truth. Also, that can be dangerous as well. Yeah. 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 So, so no, I believe every person is imbued. We are spirit. And so we come here to learn. And some of us learn some really hard lessons. But if they can take those lessons and rise to the occasion, And have more understanding about life and people, you know. That's what where we're going for knowledge, for knowing, Mm. awareness of awareness of what's going on, and not just being closed into your own little world. So you you would relate uh, spirit and consciousness as basically the same thing, like like spirit is like the consciousness of God, or or separate things, or like well. When you say awareness, I think of like conscious, being aware of something, being conscious of things, and 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, spiritual awareness is different. Is what I'm talking about. Okay. Because, uh, like I volunteered, <laughs> right? And I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's been a life's pursuit, you know, to be able to help myself and to help others uh, gain more knowledge about who they are and uh, to help them step out of the ego. The ego is limitation, always. Fear and limitation, guilt, all of that stuff. Whereas spirituality has none of that. It's compassion, love, joy, peace. And it's hard to believe that you can live that way here on the planet. Uh, people don't really think you can. Yeah. And so they don't. Mm -hmm. Because what we believe, we create. We're doing it. Nobody's doing it to us. It's a dance, right? If, yeah. yeah. And if I, if I have a, oh, maybe a dismal thought about someone, something they're doing, something mm -hmm. I'm judging, right. right? I know I'm creating it. So I immediately put the ego aside. And I look at them as spirit, as love, and with compassion. We're all here to learn. And it's not up to me to say what's right or wrong for anyone. Right. Because we're all creating our own reality. In like an unfolding, in the unfolding present moment, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't spend a lot of time in the past at all anymore. Uh, I'm pretty much in the now. You know, in, in this in this instant, mm -hmm. you know. So, Except maybe to recall useful information every once in a while, like situations. Well, that's, that's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> Consciousness has ego and has um, spirit. Right. But you know. Is that is that like the balance between um, the psyche and and you know one's own psyche and one's philosophy type of thing like. A, you know, the spirit and the the mind. Like, would you say ego is part of the mind? Or... Yes. Yeah. It's all mind. Right. All mental. We... Yeah. We're we're mind. That is what we are. Mm -hmm. we, and it's, I'm not talking about the brain. Mm -hmm. You mean... So, like... Uh... Our mind and our heart. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's not a body. Mind is limitless, and it's uh, but the part that we made, right? God didn't make that. The ego mm. we right. made, and that's what we individuated, we separated. Yeah, that's why it's it's like part of your identity and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the ego is, is always pain and suffering, and it's always uh, limiting, limiting either right. to self or others. Whereas spirit is always expansive. You know, you're always growing, learning more. Right. Being more in the presence of God is about love. You know, the thing that upsets me a little bit is that, you know, religions teach that God punishes you. Mm -hmm. for there, are, there is no sin. There's only experience. So the concept of good and evil, a lot of people are really stuck on that. You know, very, mm -hmm. very much so. What do you think is the, <clears throat> what do you think is kind of a, the root of that, or how? Do, where do you think that that arises from? That concept of duality and stuff like that. When is there any way to remediate that, or is <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You step out of it. Okay. You, 
don't judge good or bad. So do you have um, advice for people or any techniques that you use to help kind of recognize your ego and step step back and oh yeah yeah I've been practicing <laughs> quite a few years and I and I I'm still here with the body so yeah. you know an ego right so I think I've arrested my ego a great deal you just so it's not like the ego is a bad thing it's just you you recognize it and you accept it for what it is well we created it so we can yeah. uncreate it mm. okay god didn't create the ego that that was our idea you know because we are our own gods mm -hmm. kind of and that's something that eastern philosophy teaches a lot as well as scientology that's kind of one of the leaks that they have right is that we're our own we are all aspects of God and we are our own God in a way, right? And it's... Well, he, God created us in his image. Yeah. So yes, of course, we're the son of God, I guess you could say. You know. But um but the ego, we created. We created conflict. We created separation. Mm -hmm. We created wars. We create right. all of that. We've invented those That's, things. Yeah, we did. So you think that it's possible power over. It's not empowering anyone. Mm -hmm. Power over. Yeah. yeah. Power, money. Material. Go into all the material things. So do you, from your point of view, I mean, I already know this about you, but mm -hmm. um, you view it kind of like this is like a 3D or four dimensional reality where that's that material thing is what we're learning, right? That's our dimensional like we're learning to each of us learn our own things in that dimension, right? That that's kind of your yeah. We're learning our, our lessons here because it's more concrete. Actually, we made this, so we can unmake it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like you know, there's lots of different ways to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, either it, whether it be like exploring oneself and and like you say, becoming more aware, or it's more dramatic, like someone like suicide or whatever, right? We can make that, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can create that. We can yeah. create anything. We're, we're a creator as much as God is. Only we got a little self-centered. <laughs> do, you, do you, so that kind of goes back to the um, scarcity versus abundance or the, um, you know, the, the idea that it's a doggy dog world, you know. Um, do you think that there's a way that we can overcome that mm -hmm. um, in this reality? Mm -hmm. So, do you think that war is something that we can uh, not do anymore? Like, mm -hmm. do you think that's possible? And then, how, what are what would be some of the ways that you would that you think that that would that would help? Like, how, that where it wouldn't no longer be in the human zeitgeist to. Well, have first war. of all, we have to not accept it. But we all accept that that's the way it is here. Well, not all of us. Not I, all I of us, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. We, first step is to, yeah, be, to aware, be aware of it, yeah, and then not then play into it. Not just say, oh, that's just the way things are, is what you're saying. Right, correct. Right. And I think it's a mindset. Uh, I came in thinking everybody was loving. Mm -hmm. That got dispelled really quickly. I think that's kind of losing innocence in a way, right? Isn't that it's kind of... It is. And, yeah. and some of the things that I've gone through have jarred me to my core, right. you know? Um, so, you know, it can't be Pollyanna on this planet. <laughs> it's just yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but um, we can get to the point where we can keep we can ignore the ego enough so that it's not even there for us. In other words, all our thoughts are our will and God's will, and. It's full of compassion and love and peace and mm -hmm. joy. And so you're suggesting like a, an alignment with some type of greater source or greater Absolutely. scale of creation type of thing, right? 
Oh, I, I absolutely. I how, came in that way. I don't how would, how do you think it would, that could be taught or like introduced into society to where that can be well, a direction we go as a civilization? You'd think religions would be appropriate to hear, but the problem is with religions is the truth has gotten really messed up. You know, they believe in sin, they believe in evil, they believe in punishment, they believe, you know, and, and rules. And, uh, um, There's still but, some, some uh, like, golden tenets and, and truths in it, right? Like, oh, uh, of course, yeah, of course. If, if one doesn't take everything literally, right, it kind of have to be... Well, I think it's, here again, I'm talking power over, okay? And some religions get screwed up, you know? Because of their organization. Because, and, yeah, and, because and they bring ego into it. Yeah. You know, and they get screwed up. I'm not saying that people are bad or good or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's just what yeah. happens, right. you know, with it. It deteriorates. But... Um, because I teach a course in miracles, okay, um, we're all doing the best we can at the time that we're doing it, right. whatever it is, you know, and it's more about spirit than uh, an organized religion mm. because. We're all spirit, mm -hmm. and we can all learn about spirit, no matter what religion we are, what place we are on the planet. It's, right. yeah. And to learn your actual identity and not identify so heavily with our personalities, with our, how much money we make, mm -hmm. how much, what's, what's happening here in the physical, right? Um, and pay more attention to connecting to spiritual, connecting to spirit, Holy Spirit, God, you know, because when God's directing me, I don't have to think of what to say, what to do, how to be, because he just flows through me. And when I give my sessions of healing, um, I'm not doing it. I'm just the big, I'm just the channel. Mm -hmm. I'm just the vehicle. Um, the power certainly comes from that other dimension. And so spontaneous healings. Yeah, great. Nobody believes they happen, but they do. <laughs> I believe it. And so does my client. And that's why it happens. Right. It's like you said before, it's, it manifests it, right? It's, it manifests. Because you're putting your intention and postulating in that, that direction. Yeah. yeah, my heart is there, my mind is there. Right. And it has nothing to do with ego, nothing. So, and that's a good segue, is, uh, is A Course in Miracles. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what A Course in Miracles is and how you got into that and kind of what it teaches and stuff? Well, I got into the Course in Miracles uh, when we, we were living in uh, Washington. Yeah. Okay, and I was always searching, mm -hmm. especially then. Things were not going well. Yeah. So I was reaching out, and I found it, you know. And uh, it was all the things I believed, all the things I had t told the, the father when I went, the priest when I was in, Europe, I don't believe that. I don't believe that God punishes us. Mm. I don't, you know, I don't believe my grandma's going to go to hell because she got married more than once. Mm -hmm. I did. I, I was in said, fifth grade. Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> and what, he, and what was his response? He would laugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he loved, yeah. he loved it because I was thinking. Mm -hmm. No, he was great. Yeah. He was, you know, anyway, so moving back from fifth grade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the A Course in Miracles is teaching us salvation. It's teaching us how, 
who we really are and how to bring that light and that love to everyone. Now, can you imagine a world where everybody's doing that? That's kind of what you. That's kind of what you're suggesting is uh, maybe a more spiritual awareness in schools and exploring. Focus. You know, yeah. yeah. But everybody stays away from that. Just like they stay away from religions. The schools don't teach any of that. Right. I mean, if it's open to all religions and all mm -hmm. right, and it's inclusive to all religions, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see why it'd be such a big deal. Well, but, it wouldn't be. Yeah. Do you think that that plays uh, against the powers? You know the the power control and stuff like that, and maybe there's uh, a lot of uh, resistance from people who have a lot of influence on our society and stuff like that, like intentional, or do you think it's just kind of a subconscious resistance, or what do you, what's your take on that? Um, the vague, well, vague uh, yeah. conspiracy kind of narrative stuff. <laughs> you know? the... Yeah. Um, let's see. Where a couple questions at. I'm just so like um, you know the people who uh, are in high positions of power. Do you think that they they intentionally would resist um, self uh, critical thought, uh, self awareness of, of exploring one's spirituality in school? Do you think that they? Do you think that that's like something that's actively happening? People or? are afraid of spiritual things. Yeah. And I'm just. I mean, that's a generality, but I'm just saying. That most people, when they think of spiritual things, um, they do equate it with their own religion, mm -hmm. number one. Yeah. And the definition that they have for that is different. Mm -hmm. Depending. You mean like each different person has their own? Right. Right. Whereas in A Course of Miracles, we're, um, we're a spirit having a physical experience. Where most people feel we're having a spirit, uh, physical experience. Physical experience. And the spirit is kind of a back burner yeah. thing that may, may or may not exist type of thing. Correct. Yeah. So, so if everything is spirit, everyone is spirit, there is no dichotomy. Right. There is no war because we're respecting and understanding other people and realizing that we're all one on that level, mm -hmm. on that dimension with spirit. We're all one. So, do I kill my brother? I don't think so. Yeah, I see what you're saying. The, uh, hurting myself. Right, you're hurting yourself. Yeah. So, so that's how it works. It, um, there's so much to it. That's just a tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. It's not a... And, so, and it's, my understanding is it was started through a channeling, right? It was, A Course in Miracles was started through a channel, like a channel. Yes. Or, yeah. And this is a, such a, a, a amazing story. Uh, Helen Shuklin was a channel, right? And um, uh, she h heard this voice that, that told her, but plus, she was a, uh, a clinical psychologist. psychologist, clinical right, yeah. psychologist Very like Freudian, heady, by Freudian, the book. Yeah, right, 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 all right. of advice. Probably young Ian too, though, right? Oh, right. Yeah. oh yes, yeah. she was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. She high IQ, just brilliant, and she taught at a college in New York. You know. Um. Anyway. A professor of so, psychology. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, you can imagine when she heard this joke, this voice that says, this is a course in miracles. Take notes. <laughs> she, she knew shorthand really well. Mm -hmm. She used it with her, her right. clients, patients. Right. Yeah. So she didn't know what that was. But she said, okay. So she got out her shorthand. And that's how it started. And the voice just kept telling her what. Now, she is a self-professed atheist. Mm -hmm. She doesn't believe in God, right? 
and and she, was, this, she right. was raised Jewish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think right. this is so funny. <laughs> and and she took notes for for months and months and months without even knowing who the voice was. So finally, she asked, and he said, "You know me as Jesus." And you can imagine her reaction to that. Mm -hmm. So what a struggle for her. But what a perfect person. Because she right. won't have any preconceived ideas. Right. <laughs> She's like, you know, yeah. So that's how that started. And, and so basically it's just a, it's like a workshops just to uh, help people find kind of their spiritual path or connect It'll with change their, their source life. with who they really are. Yeah. It'll change their life. Uh, just think if everybody was uh, connected to spirit. You know? Um, how life would be a breeze here. Actually, we wouldn't need it anymore. But <laughs> you think that it would descend? <laughs> oh, we would way. descend, yeah, yeah. To a whole different well that brings me to and I think that's called heaven oh uh, yeah well that's here on earth type of thing yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah that actually ties well into the next question which is uh, what are your thoughts on like um, civilizations ex uh, extending and things like uh, like UFOs and do you believe in aliens and that, that, that whole question Well, it's funny you ask that. I do believe in aliens. I don't think, wouldn't we be kind of narcissistic if we thought we were the only thing here on in this solidity? Yeah. Right. yeah. So, sure, I do. And what are your thoughts about them visiting us and having interest in us if, by any means? Well, they don't mean us any harm or they would have done it by now. Yeah, right. and you would think so. If they're able to traverse the galaxies and stuff like that, it's probably they probably have some pretty advanced technology. Well, and also a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Some are very neutral. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't have emotions. Mm -hmm. So they don't have what we have. Okay? But they're beings, you know? And do... To ground the conversation, I guess your source for that is what your intuition. Like, is that from channeling, or is that from other people channeling? Like, well, look at it this way. There, this isn't the only place that we have physical matter, energy, space, and time here. Mm -hmm. Right. This is not the only place. That there's a whole universe out there. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood is pretty high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and look what a mess we've made out of this planet. So <laughs> who wants to come here? They don't. Why do you think they've landed and helped us or done something? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they'd be attacked. Mm -hmm. And everybody would go into fear and it would create chaos and it would mm -hmm. just be yeah. So there's reasons for everything. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think they're they're a little smarter than we are. At least they haven't blown themselves up yet. We're gonna, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm being callous, but yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, that, you know, and get a clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we haven't even perfected the ability to take care of everyone on the planet yet. So, no. Like, yeah, <laughs> food, shelter, water, and, yeah, all that stuff. So. Yeah. So so it's, it seems pretty obvious to me that sure. I believe in aliens. Yeah. Besides, there's a lot of proof now. And more right. and more is coming out. Yeah. Because there was a moratorium on any of it from the government, and now it's not. It's been lifted, but there's yeah. still a lot of uh, resistance. and. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? Power. Yeah. You know? And... Not being able to handle, um, relinquishing that power. Well, maybe. 
I'm sure some would, uh, officials, whoever they were, thought that if they did reveal this, that there'd be a whole panic on Earth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that would have been so good either. Right. You know, so I think we had to grow into it. <laughs> Do you think we're getting more ready yeah. now? Mm -hmm. That's why everything's being released. What do you think that what do you think that would do to our society and do you think that would help our spiritual progression and our technological or our material possession both or do you think that what are your thoughts on that well i think that they're not you know there's some out there that would but they're not here to hurt us mm -hmm. um they're here to educate us just like A Course in Miracles, <laughs> we're trying to, um, if they if they wanted to destroy us, they could have done a long time mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. Okay? Right. Yeah. But they didn't. Okay, so they're waiting for us to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh, age competency do you think we're at right now? <laughs> as far as, uh, there's something called the Karmish. Teenagers. Teenagers or teenagers right now? Uh -huh. Young Teenage. or older? What do you think? Younger Young, teens? Teenagers. Younger teens? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, those were some of the worst years of my life, so jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, you know, in yeah. hindsight, it was still, it was lessons learned and, you know, it uh -huh. was appropriate. I don't have any regrets, but definitely very difficult times for, for myself, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, uh, what advice could you give, if any? to like the younger generation, you know, and, um, younger kids growing up trying to navigate this world? I would tell them, watch your thoughts because your thoughts are very powerful and they create your reality. Seems like pretty good advice. Nobody's doing anything to them. They're creating their own reality. So, and would that be watch like, your thoughts? Would that be the same message if you could say one thing to the entire world that everyone would hear? Would that be kind of the same message, or would you say something different to the entire world? You know, the older older generation. Are they going to listen to me? Well, I mean, I, I, so. I I personally think that people. <laughs> will come and listen when they're ready, you yeah. know, whoever it may be. <laughs> no, I don't think the entire world is going to listen. But if you could, if you did have that power <laughs> to plant um, you, your perspective yeah. through communication, what would, what would it be? Um, how do you, well, a couple things. How do you want to feel? Do you want to be angry all the time? Do you want to be sad? Do you want to be unforgiving? Do you want to be in that mess? That's hell. That's ego. Okay? So why not spend your life in joy and peace and love? And that means for everyone, not just for yourself. And watch your thoughts. That's, that's the hold that the ego has on us. We mistake the ego's thoughts for our thoughts. They aren't. They're there, but the more we ignore them, they have no power on us whatsoever. They dissipate, they go away, because we're not continually creating them, okay? So on the other hand then, if, if you know that we're all in this together, right? And have, it's really hard but sometimes you have to look past the hurt and pain, you know, get that out of the way and see the soul, see the spirit behind it. It was kind of like, you know, even, even in um, the Israel debacle here. Israel-Palestine yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, um, they let uh, an older woman the younger one go, you know, for a trade for how their 
asking to put mm, prisoners of war. Prisoners of war, yeah. right. And so when they had a camera there, when they walked, you know, in. Uh, Is this going, going from Israel to Palestine? Or from Palestine, to Palestine to Israel. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they captured all kinds of people. Right. There was, like I say, there was a grandma, mm -hmm. there was this other younger woman that they released. And as the older woman walked out in all the terrorists or have masks on, mm -hmm. they, you know, there were things over their heads, mm -hmm. you can't see who they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, as she walked out on her right, she went over to one of the terrorists and she looked at him and she said, I want you to know that I love you. And uh, that I don't think that you're a horrible person. She said, I want you to know that, that I have much love for you. She went like that. Mm -hmm. And then she walked out. And this is, they, had, they were holding them captive. Right. You see what she did there? Yeah, she didn't fight fire with fire. And Gave me chills. Yeah, it just kind of diffused it in it a way, just, right? Yep, that was it. So I'm sure he'll think about that. It's forgiveness. Yeah. Well, so many of the terrorists, you know, I won't get into that, but they're they're brainwashed and taught yeah. certain and they've dynamics. gone through things yeah. and right. had hard lives and you know yeah. And it's like that on both and sides. And most of them sure. are really young, so they yeah. are impressionable. And so, yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Right. So, what I would tell people is, you know, love your brother, love. Love everyone. There is a place of forgiveness where there is no sin. We're all here to learn. And we all choose a path so we can learn. You know? Um, that has nothing to do with our essence. That has nothing to do with who we really are. These things are temporary. Mm -hmm. All of this is temporary. Mm -hmm. You know? Except us. Our spirit. Just part of God. So, I would say, how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel crappy all the time? Or do you want to feel like, you know, you're in heaven? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want to manifest? What do you want to manifest in your life? Right. And I personally got tired of manifesting disasters in my life. <laughs> So when I found the course, I went, oh, no wonder, <laughs> you know, right. I've been creating this, you know, it's just, right. yeah, so it was a big ha ha ha. And my life has been beautiful since. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I'm oh, you're glad welcome. I got to record this and be able to tell your story a little bit for people who are interested and ready to listen. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs>
a smile to be a sign of my joy in existence. I would rather that I died in yearning and longing than that I live weary and despairing. I want the hunger of love and beauty to be in the depths of my spirit, for I have seen those who are satisfied the most wretched of people. I have heard the sigh of those in yearning and longing, and it is sweeter than the sweetest melody. With evening's coming, the flower folds her petals and sleeps, embracing longing. At morning's approach, she opens her lips to meet the sun's kiss. The life of a flower is longing and fulfillment, a tear and a smile. The waters of the sea become vapor and rise and come together and area cloud. And the cloud floats above the hills and valleys until it meets the gentle breeze, then falls weeping to the fields and joins with the brooks and rivers to return to the sea, its home. And so does the spirit become separate from the greater spirit to move in the world of matter and pass as a cloud over the mountain of sorrow and in the plains of joy to meet the breeze of death and return whence it came to the ocean of love and beauty to God.